Welcome to Digital Asset News Clips, where we take the advancements in crypto and digital assets and bring them on to bite-sized pieces. Today, just as the thumbnail and title suggest, there is a new project, which I think is very unique and could be something potentially very big. But I must warn you, this is one of those long-term plays. So we're going to take a look at the cryptoverse. And what we're going to do is to break it down into the, the bite-sized pieces that we possibly can. So the first thing we're going to start with is what I call the UTT overview, which is uh, the utility, the tokenomics, and also the team. And just to give you like a brief overview about what we're dealing with as far as this project. Then we're gonna get into the details. We're gonna talk about the introduction, what's going on, the uh, archipelagos, <laughs> the further uniqueness and tokenomics. And lastly, we'll take a look at uh, the roadmap and just tell you just how extremely early you are. So as you can see on the left-hand side here, this is uh, the video production of the actual game itself. Very slick, very nice looking game, as you can see. It looks like it's uh, graphically intense, which is pretty great because a lot of these games out here, as far as metaverse, kind of blocky, kind of blotchy. Not that there's anything wrong with that. I mean, it works pretty well for Roblox, but uh, I think for some of the gamers, they're looking for a crisper type of experience, and this is what it looks like. So let's just break down and take a look at what I call uh, the UTT. So the first part is, what's the uniqueness? What makes this so unique? So there's three things that I, I actually four things I came up with. The first one is the Unreal Engine, which is what they're building this on. Second one is how they underpin and they use the uh, Chain Guardians uh, token for governance. And lastly, the multi-chain world. And we'll also take a look at those islands. So the first thing, we'll start with this Unreal Engine. As you can see before, it looked like a pretty crisp game as composed as opposed to like Decentraland or to um, the Sandbox. And the reason is because they're using the Unreal Engine. This gives you a photorealistic quality uh, as far as like AAA quality graphics. I think this is what a lot of different gamers are looking for. There's a, uh, a physics engine providing universal standards for creators and developers, which is great because if you wanna build anything out and really get this thing moving, you need a, a pretty standard uh, type of property. So these developers, and these creators can actually say, okay, this is what we're gonna build on, this is how we're gonna make it, and this is how we use this standard, which is uh, the Unreal Engine. So that's the first one. And then if we uh, also take a look at uh, the utility token as far as like, uh, and also tokenomics, if you wanna take a look at it. This is the token itself. This is the governance token. This is Chain Guardians or CGG. And if you notice one thing, and this is what I'm always harping on uh, as far as like uh, the, the, the basic tokenomics, you want to take a look at a project which doesn't have like a quadrillion different tokens. And if you notice one thing about Chain Guardians, it has 120 million max supply. Total supply is 120 million. That's it. And then if you take a look at the market cap, it's only $32 million right now. Not a not a 32 billion, not 320 billion, which is crazy. 32 million, and it's at 64 cents. So when I say that you are very early, you are extremely early. And lastly, you might notice one thing I didn't highlight, which is the circulating supply. 50 million, 142,000, which is a little bit less than total supply. Well, why is that? That is because if you take a look at the tokenomics itself, and you can see one of the things I look at is I want to make sure that no one's going to dump on me and it's not like an 80% uh, venture capitalist and then you know 10% goes to the team, then 5% goes to a sale and then you know, the retail just gets dumped on. In this one, the allocation looks pretty good. 45% community, 11% uh, community, of the ecosystem, 2% public sale, 23% the team and advisors. Great. You know, I got to actually pay these guys and gals to actually make this thing run. 19% early supporters. Okay, great. But back to that 50 million part. This is the release schedule. This is what makes it very interesting because you've got from 2021 and we're right now, it's February 15, 2022. Look at this release schedule. You still got four more years to hit the maximum amount as far as the ecosystem, team, early supporters, public sale, and community members. So take a look at that so you can see just how far along we are as far as not getting dumped on. And then uh, that also brings me to my last point or well, next to last, which is the multi-chain world. And what I don't like about this project initially was it's built on Ethereum ERC-20. I'm not a big fan of paying huge gas fees for NFTs and stuff like that. It makes no sense to me. But the saving grace here is that it's a multi-chain. They're actually building this out. So you can bridge it to Binance Smart Chain, Polygon, and Avalanche's seed chain. And there's a rumor there's uh, more on the horizon. So that's one of the very few that I've heard about 
that uses multi-chain assets. So that's looking pretty good. And then also the last thing I think that makes it this very unique is the way that it's structured as far as the different land masses. And there's eight different types. There's there's the hub, floating island, subaquatics, and uh, different places. But the one that's interesting to, <laughs> to me is one called Underworld. And the Underworld, which is the, the subaquatic areas, you've got three different levels. You've got the first one, the first layer, is pretty much just this aquatic layer in the metaverse. Great, no big deal. But the second and third layers are composed of the NSFW, or not safe for work. Second one, not safe for work. Third one, really not safe for work. I can just tell you this. I've lived in Vegas for a couple of years, and I can just tell you that uh, the underworld, gambling and those types of things, really does pull in a lot of people, just saying. So that takes care of the, of the uniqueness and a little bit of the tokenomics. Now let's break into uh, the actual team itself. And we take a look at the team. This is from chainguardians.io. If I scroll down, uh, I've got the top three right here, are the founders. This is the ones that I want to look at because I don't know where you're going until I know where you've been. And you got three co-founders, Emma Lou, Robbie Cochran, and uh, Aiden Lou. So I'm going to start with Robbie here. Great name. So Robbie here, uh, if you take a look at uh, what he has done, uh, things in the past, obviously current is uh, Chain Guardians co-founder. Then 2019 to present, he's on the Decentraland University board member. I was like, what the heck is that? I don't even know what that is. Decentraland University is the educational district in Decentraland. So they all have experience with previous metaverses, them and some of the developers that they actually work with. Also on top of that, uh, we took a look at uh, Emma Lou. She's obviously Chain Guardians, but also she was an advisor to Ethermon. I'm like, I don't even know what that is. So Ethermon, we can hear their, their Twitter account, NFT game since 2017, acquired by Community in 2019, and uh, is number eight largest district in Decentraland. Okay, looking pretty good. Then there's their website itself. They got a lot of players, good for them. And lastly, we can take a look at Aiden Lu. He is the, as they call the NFT professor. I don't know exactly what that is. I gotta get this guy on the, on the show so he can explain that. But Chain Guardians, NFT professor again for Ethermon, private equity, Swiss One Holding, managing partner in Global Crypto Solutions. So uh, him and uh, ba, 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 Emily, or Emma, excuse me, looks like they have been uh, in the crypto space for quite some time. And then lastly, uh, as far as the team, that's great that they have those, but the supporting cast, I mean, the CFO and the CCO, great. But this one, Noisacta, veteran artist, portfolio that includes DC Comics, Nintendo and Disney, not too bad. That's great for the actual vision. But this is the hum. This is, these guys and gals right here, are the ones that are going to make this great. You can only go so far as how great your team is. And it really comes down to really a solid crack team of developers. Adam, Julian, Yasir, just to name a few, Ganesh Sali, and you can see their uh, their history. Adam here has got uh, 14 years experience. Julian, 12 plus years, 12 plus years. Ganesh, he's also a Python expert and blockchain developer. And there's some other ones down here. So Again, when I'm taking a look at the at where a potential project can go, the basics of basics I can always look at is what's the utility? Is this is, is there any kind of um, uniqueness to this? Uh, how the tokenomics are? Am, am I going to get dumped on? And does it look like it's going to be a good investment? And of course, lastly, uh, is the team. So it's looking pretty solid right there. Now, what I want to do is I want to get into those details we talked about and talk to you about uh, the actual inner workings of the cryptoverse and this is where the devil really is in the details. So I'm going to swing over here real quick. This is the cryptoverse and this is this is kind of like their white paper but it kind of condensed a lot of things into it. So this is what it states. Cryptoverse, 3D virtual world built on real engine. Users will be empowered to create, own and monetize experience using uh, the CG tokens, uh, chain guardian tokens. Users can maintain provable ownership uh, known as land which are NFTs. NFTs will be manifested through the Ethereum blockchain. Eh, but there's also multi-chain. Other chains will be utilized, like I said, multi-chain world. To interact with the metaverse, users will manifest within the world as an avatar, a digital representation. Avatars will be NFTs, friendly ecosystem, all that great stuff, right? So fantastic. Now we're going to skip ahead to the Genesis part, and we're going to talk about the actual uh, map or the actual land masses uh, for what they are. So 
this is the initial Genesis map, just this thing right here, what we just talked about. It's a finite space. If the need for more space arises, this can be addressed via, addressed via governance. So right now, the land is locked. Nothing else is going to be built uh, for what they have as far as these maps, unless everybody comes together and starts to vote, which that's the whole point of the Chain Guardians token. So let's take a look at the map itself and see what it's all about. Let me blow this up. So this is what we have. All the different districts that we talked about. Entertainment, Little Vegas, the PVP dome or player versus player. You got the hub, which is where everybody manifests in initially. Business sector, and we'll get into all this stuff. Under Underworld 1, safe for work. Underworld 2, not safe for work. Underworld 3, really not safe for work. And then you got high society, and we're gonna talk about exactly what those are uh, actually right now. So let's talk about the zones. Let's break all those eight areas down into what they actually are and what they mean uh, for the actual cryptoverse when you get into here. So the first one is the hub. And the hub is just, it's the first place that new users come into. They manifest in there, there they go. It's the center of the cryptoverse, it's connection to all the other islands. And then this is where you get transportation methods. And that's an interesting part about this. I'll get to that in a bit because the transportation is unlike other games, you can't just instantly teleport. You have to actually transport yourself. And that's gonna come into the play as far as like the, but not just the avatars, but the NFTs that you use as far as like the transportation, the taxis, the, the airplanes, the cars, the vehicles, and things like that. The next one is uh, games and entertainment. Entertainment zone is to be uh, the home of two cornerstones. Little Vegas, just a little, just a little piece of Vegas. And the uh, PVP dome, which is uh, the player versus player dome. And the next one, I think is interesting that they included this, and it is actually unique, I should have talked about this in the beginning, is education. And people are like, who cares about that? It's important, that's why. I, I think it's. A, I think education is important, obviously, because of this channel, but for what they're gonna do, you're gonna find universities, knowledge bases, and an online space that will facilitate learning. Vision is to ensure that no one gets left behind, no matter where you're from. So you could probably come in here and you can learn about blockchain technology. You could also potentially learn about finance, maybe learn about the the, the backdrop of uh, investing and essentially uh, why blockchain technology is potentially so important. I would like to actually uh, pick up a piece of land there and I probably will because uh, that's what I have. And also, before we go on, uh, I forgot to mention this in the very beginning, which is this. Uh, everything I talk about on this channel, I own. I'm super biased. Like, I don't just talk about things and don't buy it. I mean, this, that makes no sense to me. So I have Chain Guardians tokens. I'm waiting for the land sale and I will buy a bunch of it. So just so you know, uh, I'm in there with you. It's not just me just rambling about stuff. I actually have real skin in the game. All right, so high culture. This sounds good. High culture zone is constructed uh, of three floating islands, which will slowly rotate and reside above the hub. High Culture Zone will provide awe-inspiring views. Great. This is where you can do stuff like uh, get up uh, really expensive NFTs and artwork and their display, stuff like that. You can also, uh, for other cultural events such as open mic nights, comedians, or debate and philosophy clubs. So again, pretty unique place uh, as far as what they're trying to do. The next one is business. And to me, I think this one kind of competes with what Microsoft is trying to do. And it makes a lot of sense because if you want a metaverse, try to make it for as many people as you possibly can. So the, the uh, business district, it's all finance and business. Find meeting rooms, corporate headquarters, conferences. It will have everything people need to succeed, whether they are a blue chip trader or more of a de degenerate degen or a degenerate trainer. So I'm wondering right here if they're going to have uh, in metaverse crypto exchanges that you can walk up to and start to do your trades in like a metaverse play. I know it's a little bit different, but I think it's pretty interesting. And then also, um, as I'm talking about this, you might think to yourself, I always think to myself metaverse play, and you have those stupid Oculus things on that are just, have you tried to use those? They suck. So I've talked to the, the, the couple of the founders and they're like, we're trying to get away from that Oculus device because no one likes to wear that stuff. And here's where it gets interesting. So the underworld. Don't shy away from it. I think we're all adults. Uh, the underworld is subaquatic, accessible via large elevator shafts, which is connected to the hub on the ocean level. Remember, you can't just teleport wherever you want to. You have to take transportation. It's segmented at three levels, uppermost being dedicated to underwater activities, swimming with marine life, and blah, blah, blah. Properties in this level are expected to boast stunning views and extreme tranquil setting. Great. This is interesting. Second and third levels of the underworld are not safe for work stuff. Content and will be access controlled. 
pending the implementation of age check verification. Great. The underbelly of the cryptoverse. Let's just be honest. There's always underbelly in every different lands, every different state, every different country that you go to. Why are the metaverse being different? Strip clubs and other edgy extracurricular activities which are able to satiate your deepest desire and fulfill users' ultimate fantasies. Sure. Content which is considered to be illegal in nature will not be approved for deployment. So that's an interesting twist as to how we think about decentralization. I think there has to be some kind of a little bit of uh, a tabs on things. You can't uh, go in there and do crazy stuff. And then to finish up, there's two more pieces. Founderland, which I think is where I will uh, would like to be, but even I won't have access to that, no matter how much money you got. So not much is known about Founderland. It's similar to Palm Beach residential area in terms of exclusivity and aesthetic. Uh, on the tranquil CG-shaped island, owners can connect with other movers and shakers. And this is a, a private resort for the founders of projects and requires a special founder key to access it. Wouldn't that be cool to have a giveaway where you could like give away one, one access point just for one lucky person for that one? That'd be interesting. And then uh, key opinion later land or, or Coland. <laughs> it's funny. Coland. Coland. Maybe they should rename that. Coland doesn't sound good. Cold Land is an exclusive media-centric zone, which is adjacent to Founderland. It's probably where I'll be. First, a city, a city zone full of sophisticated high-tech where influencers can network, research, endorse, and of course, communicate. And you have live streaming opportunities. Second area surrounding the glamorous hub is the lux luxurious residential area known as Colon Drive. Great. So that is the whole different segments and land uh, assets that are out there. Now what I want to do is uh, skip ahead and talk about building and land because i think this is where a lot of opportunities will be as far as like buying selling renting job creation and everything like that so building so just so you know the cryptoverse will offer people the opportunity either to utilize pre-built assets to terraform build their environment or import scenes using a developer tour tool the longer term goal will be to embed decentralized quality control process for creating content, peer to peer marketplace. Great. An individual user looking to enter the metaverse with little to no coding experience will likely go towards the pre built stuff, like me. But if you're a coder, uh, you can actually build on top of it uh, for different types of building and land. So this is where I see a little job creation. If you're a coder and you're like, well, I can build that stuff. But I don't really know how to get people in here. Maybe you need somebody to actually like be a hype man and get things in there. So I think that there's a lot of opportunities here and that's just the first part. But this is an interesting piece, the user, the user experience. I think this is what it comes down to if you're gonna make it or break it essentially. So analysis has indicated there are a number of reasons for including, but not limited to underpopulated or unpopulated content, meaning metaverses that are built, which nobody gives uh, care in the world for. So it could be a lack of meaning social interaction, underdeveloped or unfriendly world building tools, or incentive based rewards. So the cryptoverse will afford considerable resources to create engaging social and gamification layers for the purpose of enticing people to come back. And the way they're going to do that is this thing called the Prana system. This is a pretty good idea, actually. The Prana system. So the Prana system. What it's going to do is a social layer. It's similar to an advanced karma system. Users' prana scores compose a number of data points, which measures engagement, reputation, completion of quests, size and strength of the social network. So that's how everything is built up. A user's level of access will be in part determined by their prana score. Rewards are expected to include unique wearables and skins for vehicles. So the more you play, the more you get. Users will be required to spend prana in order to engage in land clearing. What the heck is that? This is land clearing. And this is where, you know, there's like play to earn. This one's like work to earn, in, in my opinion. This is an interesting concept because some people don't have tens of thousands of dollars to, to buy land, but they can work the land and they can own their land. Here we go. Land buyers are often believed to be speculative consumers as opposed to skilled creators. Okay. With a lack of technical proficiencies, early land purchases will be unlikely to be building experiences themselves. True, I'm pretty busy. I'll probably buy some land. Don't know what I'll do with it. Which results in underpopulated content in a decentralized metaverse and in turn a lack of desire for a user 
to return and experience emptiness. So I think this is one of those things where will be a big hindrance for like the sandbox, essential land, people like me buy land up, we don't do anything with it. We're just sitting on it going, who's gonna buy it? So I think this is interesting how they're like, well, if you're not gonna use it, they're gonna be able to, to clear it and actually get it actually get a discount and pay for it. Not that it's going to take away from you, but I think it's a way for like real players who are really in there and engaging on a Prana system can actually purchase a, a good chunk of this. So this is what it means. The Cryptoverse will implement a social activity called land clearing. It's bound to the Prana system. It's a type of social quest. Friends and associates can gather together to spend time clearing select unsold land parcels from overgrown vegetation and other obstacles utilizing tools provided within the interface. Unsold parcels will only become available for purchase to those who have worked in clearing the barren yet sometimes exclusive areas at a discounted rate. In order to participate, uh, you will require a strong Prana score. So that's just the land clearing uh, part uh, itself. And then lastly, I just want to talk about, well, not lastly, the Cryptoverse Builder is a couple more. So the Cryptoverse Builder which is the actual apparatus for which you can actually uh, build these different types of uh, land structures. This is important because it's all about user interaction and the user experience. So the development team of the Cryptoverse maintain a presence in and part of different metaverses such as Decentraland, just like we saw with uh, Robbie and Decentraland University. The team recognizes a number of growing pains. And this is why I'm harping on teams because if you see where teams have been, they know the mistakes that they made and they fix those mistakes. And I think this is one of those things where they figured out, hey, we gotta make sure that the user experience is good or else people are gonna bounce. So how do they do that? Metaverse's landowners are not builders. That's true. Content creators don't have any land on which to build. The aim for the Cryptoverse builder is for it to be designed to be an offline tool or instance experience which empowers technical proficient users to create content or make it super simple to do those types of things. And uh, if they can do that, I think it'll be a big winner. And now, besides those things, there's just two more pieces. We're gonna talk about land sharding and then also VR support uh, and we'll get out of here. So land sharding and components. I, I love that word, sharding, land sharding and compiling. So no metaverse offers this so far. The development scope will include the ability for landowners to fragment or shard their individual part. Why don't they just say fragment? Sell part of their originally purchased land, rent segments, or more coherently curate or control different experiences. If you've ever had a plot of land, let's say like uh, you buy like a couple acres or something like that, you know what a pain in the A it is to actually get the surveyor out there in the state and the county to actually approve it. You got to pay a bunch of money for them to like, you know, chop it all up. So you say like, well, now you have, now you have six parcels on this one acre land, you can sell it off, but you have to have access and so on and so forth. It's just the thing that we do with, with our investments. But think about this. Now you can do that in the metaverse world. You can chop it all up. Let's say you buy it for uh, a parcel for a big pot of land for one Ethereum. Then you chop it all up and go, okay, each one of these is worth half an Ethereum. People are like, well, I don't have one, but I'll pay for half. And I think that's the big play. Also, if you like things like, as far as like rental, hey, you want to rent, you want to build an experience on here, and then also you want to uh, have ad space, well, go right ahead because I got a bunch of land for you that you can rent from me, dirt cheap, and you can do whatever you want to. I'll take a cut of those those profits though from, from, the, uh, from the ads. I'm just saying that you could possibly do that. But these are just the, the different realities that could potentially be out there for the metaverse. So you can sell part of the land, rent segments, curate, all that stuff. Experienced developers, corporations, and partners will still have the option to keep the big sizes in order to create more expansive experiences. And then uh, next to last, I will just say uh, the VR support. I talked to the founders and they are not big on these goofy, dumb, oculus type of headsets i don't know if you've ever tried to use them but it's very difficult quite a pain after like 10 minutes 20 minutes imagine having these on for like hours at a time forget about it so they're more looking into augmented reality and mixed reality which i can uh, totally applaud that so the last two pieces the tokenomics which we already talked about but i just want to dig into it a little bit more and the roadmap so i can show you just exactly how early you are so tokenomics we know it's Inexpensive, market cap's very low, but there's this part right down here, the CGG. 
will be the token which powers the cryptoverse. So marketplace fees, purchase and sales of assets, purchase of assets from the storefront, public transport, custom land charting, government voting, land clearing tools, platform fees for businesses, and so and a bunch of other things. So when we take a look at the CGG itself or the the, the chain guardians token, that's huge. And when we when I when we took a look at the actual uh, price itself, I can't see how this couldn't do well. Now, I will say this. This is not investment advice. This is investment opinion. but And this is going to be a very long play, as I'm going to show you right here in the roadmap, because of just how awfully early that you are. So here's the roadmap itself. And here's the breakdown between the different dates. So... Q1, which we're in right now, the website registration just got done. Private round pre-sales just got done. First round public pre-sales just, I think they, I don't know if they haven't done that yet. Q2 2022, uh, commenced development on Prana system. Q2, first phase of land charting, commenced development of land clearing, commenced the user interface, user design. Q3, commenced development of the cryptoverse, marketplace comments, uh, commerce development of in-game building tool, Q4, finish development, commence the VR support, continue optimization of the user interface, early alpha access into the cryptoverse. So that was a lot of information for me just to tell you that this is a very long-term play. But I've always thought about if I'm going to invest, it's like planting seeds. And I plant the seeds and I wait for a finite amount of time or a good amount of time and then I harvest later on. This is not a get rich quick scheme. This is something that could do potentially very well, but it is not an overnight success. But I just wanna bring it to you and you make the decision and do your own research. So look, I know I went a little bit long, but a lot of good information. Hopefully uh, you like that. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up, consider uh, subscribing, a button right down below. All the links are in the description and that's it for today. So thanks so much for watching, I appreciate it. And I'll see you on the next one.